the goal of today is to walk through the reasons for recalibrating your sensors, as well as some common damage modes and repair services. The question is why should we recalibrate our sensors? The end goal is always to make sure you're getting the most accurate and reliable measurements for what you're doing. You want to make sure you have a you're using the correct data from the load cell quality system compliance. A lot of quality systems will have a stipulation requiring a regular calibration interval for transducers and other items, along with a regular check on the health of your load cell. You want to make sure that that load cell is functioning as intended from the manufacturer, and if the calibration is a good check on that. Why would a little output change from when delivered at the factory? 1. Application Loading Conditions If there's something inherent in the application that is causing the load cell to experience forces at or above the safe overall capacity of the cell, or severe duty cell, or a severe duty application with all cells being exercised very extremely could cause a shift in output. 2. Physical Damage Let's say you had a connector get torn off or a cable that was broken and a splice was made to repair it, anything that could change the resistance of the bridge could impact that load so output. Environmental exposure, we do see a fair amount of sensors damaged through moisture or other influence. And some of our cells do have an inert gas seal that can be compromised. When that happens we can see moisture ingress that would cause either a change in resistance or other issues. 3. Time. Now. This is a very minor issue but you want to stress that there's not a whole lot of shift from this. But there is a very slight shift that occur from a load cell over time where the bridge ages and changes very slightly. When should you recalibrate? What kind of a calibration interval? Our standard and our recommendation for recalibration interval is going to be one year. However, this is entirely dependent on your specific requirements and the application that it's going in. If it's an application where the load cell is often subject to potential overloads or could cause an output to change, then you may want to use a shorter interval to keep a close eye on that load cell output. If it's you know an application that's not being used as frequently or is very mild and mannered you may be able to use a longer interval. The caveats here would be that of course you can adjust that interval based on your confidence level in that calibration, but you should always keep a close eye and analyze these calibration results to make sure that the correct interval is being used. Why should you go to Interface for your calibration requirements? We are an ISO 17025 accredited laboratory. We have over 50 years of calibration experience as a company. We've been manufacturing load cells, and the calibration of those load cells is a core competency for us. We performed nearly 95,000 plus calibrations performed annually on multiple hydraulic and then dead weight test stands, so a lot of rigs to support your requirements. We can calibrate any manufacturer's load cell. We've permanently archived our test data, so we can retrieve, and you generate history. We use interface in this calibrated gold and platinum reference load cells for all our calibrations. We have a proprietary software package we use for data collection and analysis. We have no problem doing custom calibrations for what you need. And then of course we have very dedicated highly trained calibration and repair personnel. Our first priority, is making sure that we perform these services for the customer, the best that we can. Some of the common damage modes we see? 1. Connector or cable damage. This happens pretty frequently, and we recommend a calibration because it can impact the resistance of the bridge. 2. Zero shift. We see this a lot as well this is a very common symptom of an overload. There can be other things that can cause a zero shift but that is very common. We can re-zero a load cell within reason, but past a certain point we can't repair it. What is an overload? It's a deformation of the little sensing element. If you pass the yield point of the load cell sensing element, this results in a permanent deformation. 3. Bad water and moisture damage. That often manifests as low insulation resistance. This would also be seen as a drifting or noisy signal. Have your load cell plugged in your instrumentation, and you see the zero moving around or it's just not stable. And again as previously mentioned we do interface load cells that have an inert gas seal and that can be damaged the sealing can be lost and needs to be replaced. Calibration services. We offer a pretty broad range of recal. We have specific calibrations for specific types of load cells. For example if you have a mini load cell like an S-type or something, we do offer just a basic two-point calibration. Interface standard cal is five points tension and compression, that would include an interface NIST traceable calibration certificate. Next we offer an accredited calibration or calibration that would meet the requirements of an ONSI 540 or a MIL standard 662A. That would be a standard 5-point tension and compression, which would include an ISO 17025 accredited calibration certificate. We also have ASTM, E74 Class A. 
this is a more involved calibration this would be 10 points 3 runs with a rotation in between each run. It would include curve fit plots coefficients and a lower load limit on that calibration certificate. We also do torque calibration here at interface. The standard calibration is going to be 5 points tension and compression, and include a NIST traceable calibration certificate to 222 inch pounds. N. M. I. Traceable certificate above that up to 100k pound inch. And again we would have the accredited option NIST traceable to 2200 inch pounds, NMI traceable to 100k. We have ASTM, E2428 class calibrations, to be similar to the E70 for a force transducer. So 10.3 runs with rotation between each run. The calibration certificate will include curve fit plots coefficients and lower load limit. And additional services we have we can offer would be extra or special points, additional bridges, and system calibrations. This would be a combination of a load cell and an instrument and it would be loaded in the rig together. We would offer a calibration when combined with the instrument and we can do that of course for interface or non-interface instruments and then instrument calibrations. If you have a load cell simulator or an indicator that is a would require an internal millivolt to volt calibration, we can perform those as well. Junction boxes would be for a multiple load cell system with a what would be called a summing box. And TED's programming for your load cells that have the TED's self-ID chip. Interface repair services we can repair your load cell as well. We try to turn it around as quickly as possible for you and understand that your requirements are demanding and need those load cells back quick. We do a complementary evaluation of the load cell bridge and any complete repair services for any of the interface load cells. This would include low profiles or a 1200 series style load cell so it would include a diaphragm replacement, connector and connector protector replacements, or retrofit. We can add those connector protectors on some of the interface load cells. We can do a re-zero within reason. An inert gas purge and backfill for applicable models. Connector replacement for any manufacturer's load cells. Cable repairs. And we can do TED's self at retrofits to other load cells as well. How do I get these recalibration services or if I need a repair who do I talk to you? The first step is you're going to make a RMA request. Send us an email, give us a call or visit our website. There is an RFQ form for an RMA. Please don't hesitate to give us a call regarding anything, especially if you have a sensor you need recalibrated.